Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glad to be in the house again. Glad to be safe. And glad to have a word from the Lord. Glad to have a word from the Lord. We're going to be, thank you God, we're going to be in 2 Kings uh, chapter 4 this evening. 2 Kings chapter 4 this evening. We've been We've had a series now, a virtual series called Preparing for Pentecost. Uh, we're getting ready for the move of the Holy Spirit, but I want to pivot a little bit tonight and just focusing on really what's going on in the house while we're preparing for Pentecost. There's some things that need to be fixed, straightened out, smoothed out, made better one way or the other. And so uh, while we have this time, uh, we should get our houses in order. We should get some things straight, uh, and, and we should be crystal clear on some, on some things for this season. We're going to be in Second Kings chapter 4, and I'm going to read from verses 1 through 7. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Thank you, God. We still in the house stand for the reading of God's word here. But also while you're in the crib chilling, you want to get your Bible out, whatever form you got it in, whether it be on your phone or on your table, or if you're just going to listen to me. But I want you to go along with me because I, I, have a, I have a word for you this evening. Praise the Lord. Second Kings 4, verses 1 through 7. Thank you, God. One through seven. What's up to my Eden family? What's up to my Eden family? Second Kings four, one through seven. Let's read. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bound men. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaid have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out unto all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil. Put two stars beside verse 7. Paramount. Verse 7 is crucial. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the anointing on your word and the power that's on your word. Thank you for the relevance, timing of your word. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that helps us to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you for who's assembled in this room. Thank you, Father, for those that are online, dear Lord, those that are at the hospital, wherever they're picking up this feed at. I thank you, Father, that there is no distance in prayer and that the same move of the Holy Spirit, the same 
unction of the Holy Spirit, the same touch of the Holy Spirit that is happening in this room amongst us will also happen in, happen in another room, happen in a, in a living room, in a bedroom, in, uh, in, 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 a, in a jail room, Father. Wherever this feed goes forth, dear Lord, wherever this word goes forth, that it would minister to people where they are, dear Lord, whether in a hospital or at home. Father, I thank you, that, dear Lord, that, that you're going to touch them where they are. I thank you that this word will minister to them in a way uh, that, that will be profound for them. I thank you that this word would arrest right, rest them right where they are today, that this word would capture uh, their attention, but it also spark their motivation. Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. I ask that I decrease, that you may increase, that I may uh, step aside, that your Holy Spirit may step in and guide me in this text tonight. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're dealing with tonight um, about, uh, about getting your house straight. It's one thing for have us to have this time that we have, and yet we've been complaining uh, some time or before about, I wish I had more hours in a day. I wish I had more time. And it's just like the Lord to set the stage. It forces us all to be home. And now that you have this time, uh, you need to get your house in order. That now that you have this time, there's some things that you need to fix while you're at home. There's some things that you need to get together, get straight uh, while you're at home. And when we think about uh, preparing for Pentecost, they, uh, I, I, I said we're pivoting from that a little bit tonight. We're still in the same vein. We're still in the same virtual series per se. But we're thinking about while we're in the house, this is the best time to fix whatever, whatever hasn't been fixed. This is the most important time because if, if we know anything about time, time is our most valuable commodity. There's a whole lot of things that we possess, a whole lot of things that we own, a whole lot of things that are within our reach. But time is the most valuable thing that we have with us today. And at this moment, you've had more time potentially than you've had in, 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 several, in several years. Because sometimes we're wishing that there's not enough hours in a day for me to handle what I need to handle. But now you're at home and now you're forced to be at home. Your house ought to be in order now that you're home. I mean, it's... There's no sense to be at home for a month and a half and your house be dirty. There's no sense to be home for a month and a half and, 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 um, and, and the window seals aren't cleaned off or the baseboards aren't clean or, or if, if, if it's ever time to paint the room that you wanted to paint, it's now the time to paint the room that you wanted to paint. If you want to remodel the bathroom, time to remodel the bathroom. If you're going to change the closet, you, it's time to change the closet. Whatever you're going to do now, you got the time to do it now. You don't want to waste the time that, is, that you now have at your disposal now. This is a valuable time. It's an important time. Now's the time to get close with the the Lord. Now's the time to get back on track. Now's the time to check things out. You ought to know what your credit score is. You ought to know what you owe. Now is the time to get things in order and to keep things in order because you have the time to do it and to pull it off now. You got the time now. You got the time now. When it came to Elijah, Elijah gave a word to Hezekiah and told him he needed to get his house in order. When we look at 2 Kings 4, there's a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband is dead. Thou knowest that he served the Lord and served and feared the Lord. And the creditor is come to him and my two sons to be bound man. And see, we gotta, what we got to keep in mind, whatever, whatever we don't fix, whatever we don't get in order, is ultimately going to fall on our children. So it's important for us to get things in order now so that they straight later. The Bible says a wise man is going to leave an inheritance to his seed seed. But what type of inheritance are you going to leave? Are you leaving an inheritance of money? Are you leaving an inheritance of spirituality? Are you leaving an inheritance of slothfulness? Whatever, whatever you're walking in or not walking in, they're, they're going to either walk in or not walk in. So whatever we're doing now, whatever the time that we have now, we need to make sure we get things in order. So not only for us to be good later on, but also for our children to be in a better position later so they can get the ball and they can start running with it. They can pass the baton to them and they can be straight. 
Listen to what the text says. The text gives us the backdrop that there's a woman who is now who was married to the sons of a prophet, which means there's there's a prophetic gift that's ultimately on her husband, and she's been served. They've been serving Elijah rather, but they at the same time they they borrowed some money or something because now the creditors are come. And because, and because her husband is dead, whatever her husband, whatever the debt was that was on the husband now falls on the sons and her. And, the, and because the debt was so high, they were going to take their sons into slavery and their sons were going to work off the debt. Whether they're going to work off the debt or die in slavery or work off the debt and then release them. But how, how many of you know when you've been born into slavery, it's hard to be released from slavery? How many know that the debt will always increase and you never get out of it once you get involved in it? That's why we got to be careful of what we step into. That's why we got to be careful what we move into. That's why we got to be careful even of credit cards. We got to be careful of debt. We got to be careful of borrowing stuff and say we're going to pay it back later. We got to be careful of, 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 of getting rich quick schemes. We got to be careful about that because if we don't get that thing straight, ultimately it's going to fall on our wife and it's going to fall on our children. And that's why we got to be, that's, thank you God. That's why we got to be good stewards over what the Lord places in our possession. That's why we got to be sure that we're not so after so much, something that's so fast and so quick right now that we got to have instant gratification on everything but rather sometimes we got to play the long game sometimes we got to put a hundred dollars aside each month better still sometimes you got to put fifty dollars aside each month and just wait that thing out sometimes you can't be good involved because see when you're in the street you try to do things fast get a couple grand here a couple grand there and that could mess you up but the thing is now we got to learn to play the long game now we got to learn to take our time now and let our money work for us even while we're not working we got to make sure we're doing the right we got to make sure we got the right business partners we got to make sure we connected with the right people. We got to make sure that our yeas are yea and our nays are nay. We got to ask God what we need to be doing. We, if there's ever a time to hear from the Lord, it's a time while you stuck in the house. Make sure, how could you be a month and a half? And how could you be in the house and not hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? What he's saying to you, to your house? Listen to what the text was saying, that we know from the text that this was a married couple, we know that they served the Lord and they served the man of God. We know that they feared the Lord is what they said. They had a reverence for God and the reverence for the man of God. But we also know they were in debt. They were serving. Uh, they, were, they were worshiping. They were committed. But they were in debt. That there's sometimes that we could we could put on a facade in front of some people in public and be a totally different at home. See, I don't want, I don't think I don't want to be I don't want to be publicly adored and and then privately a wreck. I don't want to be I don't want to be where people see me one way and then I'm at home I'm a different way. I want my house to be in order. I want things to be fixed. I want things to be taken care of. I want things to be straight, not only for me, but for my children. Thank you, God, that long after I'm gone, I want them straight. Thank you, God. That means you, that you got to take a look. You got to take a look at what you're putting aside. You got to take a look at what you got in your 401k. You got to take a look at what you're putting aside or what's coming out of your check. You got to take a look even at your, uh, do, you, do you have a burial plot? Do you, have, have you and your wife sit down and talked about what happens if you go to the hospital or she goes to the hospital? Have you got your house in order that way? Do you have enough aside for, for a rainy day or do, do you have enough a few months ahead? Do you have six months ahead, eight months ahead, ten months ahead? Are you put aside, do, is your house in order is your house in order they were serving but their house wasn't in order they were married marriage was fine but their house wasn't in order they they might have been how many know the 80 percent 80 percent sometimes is good but if the 20 percent can outweigh the 80 there was an area in their life that was not fixed and because it wasn't fixed because it wasn't addressed, thank you, God. See, sometimes that's the issue, too, that you could be in the house for a month 
and still not address the elephant in the room. That you could be walking around something and tiptoeing around stuff and still not address what's wrong rather than try to fix it and make it right. Why you got the time to make it right? Because we don't know when we get up out of here if you're ever going to have this type of time that you have right now again. So you got to take advantage of the time that you got and you got to maximize the time that you got. You got you got to, God's still blessing you while you're at home. You still got money coming in. You still good. The lights are still on. You still got food at the table. You got your waistline, your waistline might expand it a little bit. You good. But when it's all said and done, is your whole house in order? Elijah said unto her, Listen, she, this was, here's, what we, here's the first point. The first point, because we've got to move, we move quick. We don't have much time tonight. The first point is, is that desperation can be a motivator. Desperation can be a motivator. When you're desperate enough, you'll go after something. When you're desperate, you'll get up early and you'll stay up late. When you're desperate, you don't care how long the line is as long as you get yours. When, you, when you're desperate, you'll go after. When you're desperate, you'll put, you'll put your makeup on the way down the road in the car and you'll, look, you'll stop at a stop line, get your eyeliner together, you'll keep moving because you're desperate, you're going after something. When you're going after something, you don't always pick up the phone. When you're desperate for something, you don't always talk to everybody. When you're desperate, desperation can be a motivator. And some and in the word of God, when there was a famine in the land, all of a sudden there's, there's a desperation and people became motivated. Sometimes God has to put a fire under you. Sometimes God has to reignite you. Sometimes God has to re-engage you or re-inspire re re you to go after what he told you. Sometimes he brings the vision back in front of you again. Sometimes you got to take the vision out of the desk and wipe it off and take a look at it again. And while you got the time now, make your business cards. You don't have, you don't have no excuse now for why you don't have business cards now. Make your business cards now. Get your website together. Make get all your marketing materials straight. While you got the time now, fix whatever needs to be fixed. So when you do get out of the house, you can run when you get out. See, that's what I'm here for you to tell you about this evening. I'm trying to tell you that once you get out of the house, you're going to have to run when you get out of the house. You've been cooped up for so long. When you get out of the house, you're going to run after your dream. You're going to run after your vision. You're going to run after the money that you are going to make. You're going to run after the right person. You're going to run after what God has in store for you. you. Your dreams won't be far away anymore because you're going to chase them down and grab them by the neck now. Now's the time not to daydream anymore, but now's the time to make some moves. Now's the time to make some moves. And, and, and desperation was the motivator for her. When the creditors came, she didn't ask for help. But how many know if, if the creditors were coming, she was already in trouble? But it wasn't until trouble knocked on her door that she became that she became motivated and wanted to do something. Have you, let's, 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 let's pause the break right here. Have you noticed that now? the nation is motivated to do something. And the reason why the nation is motivated to do something is because it's affecting every house. They would not be motivated to do something if it was only affecting the poor. They would not be motivated to do something if it was only disenfranchising those that couldn't really be accessible. But the moment the coronavirus decided to go to, uh, go to uh, not just the outhouse, but to White House, the moment that the coronavirus moved past some poor people and over to some suburbs. Okay. Okay. Desperation can be a motivator. Listen to what it says in verse 2. Because Elijah said unto her, because he gives her the answer, she came... She came asking for help because of the situation that she was in. And, and we, we got, sometimes we got to sometimes take the mask off and ask for help. I know that you're good. You've been telling everybody you're good. You've been telling everybody you're blessed and highly favored. You, you've been saying all that, but at the same time, you haven't really been good. You've been good publicly, but privately been something else. He said, but now is the time to take the mask off and say, I'm, I'm, there's an area in my life that I need help with. She went to the man of God, said, I need some help. Here's what's, this, this is good. She, she's financially in a situation, and Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Ain't you the prophet? Don't you already know? Tell me, 
what has thou in thy house? He's picking it up. He's picking it up in, in, the, in the second question. The first question, what do you want me to do for thee? And, all, and then because of the prophet, the light bulb goes off. Oh, what, tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, thy handmaid have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you still got oil. Out of everything that you could lose, I'm glad you still got oil. The text said that she's got a little oil in the house. The first point was that the desperation is always going to sometimes, sometimes a motivator for people. But the second point that you keep in mind is that God's always going to use something that you already got. God's always, when it, when it comes to a situation that you're in, God's always going to use something to, thank you, thank you, God. He's always going to use something in proximity. Have you ever, when you read the word of God, God's people didn't have to look far for the answer. Whenever they were stuck in a situation, it was right near them. Look, when it came from, when they were in the wilderness, they needed some water. All they do was go to a rock that was nearby, and the water was going to come from the rock. When it came for David to go against Goliath, by the river and pick up a few stones, but he didn't have to go far. It was right near him. When Samson had slew all the Philistines and, and he used the jawbone to do it and now he's thirsty, he said, I'm not going to stay out here and I'm going I'm to perish because of thirst. And the Lord showed him where water was at in the same, in the jawbone that he used against the Philistines. He could use that also to, then, to, to quench his thirst. There's always something. Everybody said there's always something. There's always something nearby that's already in your proximity that you might not have been using, but God's going to bless you with it. God's going to use something that you might have overlooked. God's going to use something that you might have just used for a while and set it to the side. God's going to use something that you already got in your house because he doesn't need you going further into debt. He wants you to use what you already got to get you out of the situation that you're already in. That means that you got to re-examine some means that you got to look and see do I need 150 channels of of, 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 of of stations to look at on TV do I need to, what do I need to reevaluate when it comes to my money when it comes to my situation when it comes how many cars do you need do you, you got to reevaluate the thing do do I really need an, another home do do I really need to go into further debt in this situation how can I examine what I presently have and make things better do I have to go out to eat every week can I make some stuff at home can you reevaluate He said in the text that he's going to use what you already got in your house. The Bible says that wealth and riches are already in your house. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, if they're already in the house, if they're already in the house I want to see them. But you can't see them with a natural lens. You're going to have to use a spiritual lens. You got, because you're going to get the scales off your eyes and you're going to begin to look and see, and what, do you, what do you already have that's nearby? That he's going to use to bless me with. Thank you, God. And so, some, thank you, God. Sometimes it's not a natural thing uh, when it turns to uh, ex external that you can grab and pick up and possess. It might be that, but sometimes you got to look at your hands. Sometimes he's already blessed the works of your hands, but maybe your hands aren't. Sometimes your voice and, but at the same time you don't you haven't put that YouTube channel together yet you haven't put no videos out yet maybe he's got something already within you maybe you're an influencer and don't even know it yet maybe there's a gift in you but you got this opportunity now to bring it out otherwise you would have never thought about it you got this time now you got to evaluate you got to look you got to size some things up you got to size you thank you why you why you're stuck in a house you got to evaluate if you're stuck in a house with the right person why are you stuck in the house? You got to take a look and see, is that joker, is, is that the right one? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Is it, it's, 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 are, are you hooked up with the right one? Are we stuck together? And, and, and thank, you, thank you, God. Are we, you better know now before you're stuck together for 20 years. You better know now. If you... If, Thank you, God. You're not supposed to be test driving anyway when it comes to a relationship. You're not supposed to be just bringing anybody home anyway when it comes to it. You've got to take a look. you got to take a look and evaluate if that joke is the right one. Let me give you some spades talk because I, I gave my ladies in here some spades talk before. You, you can't ever find a king un unless you get a jokers out of the deck. 
You can't ever find a king unless you get the jokers out of the deck. And don't be fooled by one-eyed jacks. One-eyed jacks got a crown, but they got one eye on you and one eye on your girlfriend. You got to be careful when it comes to who's around you. And you got this time now. You need to evaluate, is this the right one I'm supposed to be involved with? Thank you, God. The only thing that she had in her house was a pot of oil. Thank you, God. And you don't want to lose oil. That's the last thing. Thank you, God. That's the last thing you want to lose in this situation now is oil. Because if, if you still got oil on reserve, he can keep your patience together. He can keep your relationship together. He can keep your mind together. It's, it's, you can lose a whole lot of stuff, but don't lose your oil. And don't allow people to come and deplete you of your oil. Think better still, while you're stuck and while you're stuck at home, you should do a system check. You should check and see if you do have enough oil. Your car won't run right if it don't have enough oil. You got to make sure that you got enough oil on reserve, not just for you, but also, see, the oil, the oil was for her children as well. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So if you're stuck, why are you stuck, why are you stuck in this situation? You want to make sure that you got enough anointing. You, got, you want to make sure that you tap into your spirituality. While you got this time, you want to make sure that you're good and you stay good. Don't lose your oil. Don't lose your oil. Because they, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let me pump the brake. Because when we think about where we are this year, uh, we've been pressed now, but we're also in an election year. And there's always in an election year there's, and there's going to be turbulence in November leading up people are going to fall out because people are some are going to be Democrats some are going to be Republican some are going to be liberal and some are, going to be, some are going to like you one day and dislike you the next day and I can't believe you like Trump and I can't believe you don't like Trump I can't believe you riding with Biden I can't believe you not riding with Biden you're going to leave, you got to leave all that foolishness out of the way and you got to keep your oil you got to keep your sanity. You got to stay. You got to stay solid in this whole thing. You got to talk to God now more than ever. If this, if you learn anything all this year, this year is about making sure you and God good. Listen what he said to him. Verse three. Go borrow vessels. Go borrow broad from your neighbors. Even empty vessels borrow not a few. Now, see, when I first read it, the first verse, got a, first verse let us know how they got in trouble in the first place is that they borrowed money and well, they, they, got, they, got, they got involved in some sort of agreement where they couldn't hold up their end of the agreement. Now they're in debt. And now the man of God is going to say, go, go borrow vessels. Go borrow vessels from your neighbors. Empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Now listen, listen to the way he says to borrow them from. From your neighbors. Thank you, God. Because you ought to be good with your neighbors. He's, when he says go borrow, go borrow a few vessels from your neighbors, he's not saying don't go outside of your neighborhood. Don't go outside where you normally borrow stuff from and get yourself in trouble because that's not what got you messed up before. He, was, he said, but in your neighborhood, go borrow vessels. In your neighborhood, and bring them back home. Here's the thing about borrowing vessels in your neighborhood. When you borrow vessels in your neighborhood, most people think they know your business. And so this takes a lot to go door to door and, and say, look, can I, can I borrow a vessel? Uh, can I borrow a container? And, and you, it might be subject to ridicule when you say, why? Because you know after a while, people are going to start gossiping. Girl, did she come by your house? She came by my house, and she wanted two vessels. And then her sons came over my house and got a few vessels. And then all, all of a sudden, there's gossip in the neighborhood. But it don't make no difference if people gossip about you because not everybody knows what you're working on. Because not everybody knows what you're up to. They, they think that you might be in a tight spot. No, I'm, I'm restructuring right now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm re-engaging right now. I'm getting recommitted right now. I'm getting reorganized right now. You think that I'm borrowing something for the sake that I'm in a hole. I might be borrowing something because I'm getting prepared for overflow. See, you think I'm, you think I'm in trouble. No, I'm getting, I'm getting prepared for the blessing. I, I don't have enough. I thank you. 
enough vessels to handle what's about to be poured out on me. I need to go borrow some vessels. I, I need a few vessels in the neighborhood. I need to go here and there because what he's about to release to me is not going to just get me straight for this month. It's going to get me straight for years. Not only straight for years, but not for me, but also for my children. So when I go door to door, you might be ridiculed going door to door, but you think that I'm in a hole or something. You think I'm messed up. No, I'm, I'm positioning myself because I'm preparing for the overflow. I know when God finally releases Thank you, God. When he fills up the window of heaven and pours out a blessing that I have room enough to contain or receive, it's gonna, I'm going to need some vessels to handle it. I'm going to need some, I'm going to see some willing vessels. I'm going to need some children. I'm gonna, see, that's why you can't write people off. And that's why you don't know who you're going to need when it's all said and done. Because when she's blessed, the whole neighborhood going to be straight. You don't realize that if you're ridiculing her, when you dry, you may have to go for her for help. You got to watch your mouth when it comes to people. You got to watch your mouth when it comes to talking about people. You don't know who God is raising up. You don't know who God is blessing. You don't know who God is about to pour out on. She's in the house by herself, and now she's a widow with her sons, and they writing her off, but at the same time, a man of God hadn't wrote her off. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. When you come to your neighbors, tell them that you want some empty vessels, and I need as many as you can give me because I'm preparing for overflow. That's your third point. I'm preparing for overflow. While you're in the house, you should prepare for overflow. While you're getting everything in order, you should be in, in a place of expectation because I, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Thank you, God. Or their seed beg for bread. While you're in the house, you should be preparing yourself for what he's about to release. While you're in the house, we shouldn't be complaining so much while we're in the house, but we should be appreciative. We still got a house to be in. And while we're in the house, we should be thanking God for the house that we got, but also preparing that once we get out, do you have your business plan in order? You should, you should already, once you, get, once you get out, you should have, you got enough time to have your business plan written out. You got enough time to have some sketches written out. You got enough time to brainstorm a little bit. You got enough time to figure out where you want to be positionally in the summer or the fall and in the winter. You got enough time to figure out, or, or better still, when it comes to your school, and better still, you can get ahead while you're at school. You can still do your online schooling now. Or at the same time, you can figure out what you want to do or don't. You got enough time. Thank you, God. See, you can't. Thank you, God. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you mad. I'm gonna make you mad when it comes to you. When you get out of the house and say, "I don't know what you want," you, something wrong with you. You ought to know what you want after you get out of the house after being cooped up for a month and a half. You ought to know what I want, and you also ought to know how to get it when you get out. Listen to verse four, because it's still part of the instruction. Because I'm gonna give you an instruction. Because, because getting. Getting something before got them in trouble and got them in debt. But now the man of God gives an instruction. If you can handle the instruction, the blessing will come from obedience. Verse 4. When thou art come in, shut the door upon thee and thy sons. Don't let everybody know your business. When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy sons. Keep things private that need to be private. Stop putting, put all, stop putting all your business on Facebook. Thou shalt pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. That, thank you, God. That one vessel of oil is going to fill all the other vessels that you bring into the house. And when you don't have enough vessels, when you run out of vessels, rather, the oil is going to run out. That's why you should always be in a place of continually pouring, pouring and being filled, releasing and also taking in. That's why you sh it should be, thank you, God. I hear the Lord say it should be a continuous flow. As you're pouring out, somebody else ought to pour into you. As you should, thank you, God. You should never be depleted. Thank you, Lord. You know, thank you, God. You know what he told the woman at the well? He said the, the issue is that you got a water pot. That's the real issue. Is that you, you're waiting on something to sustain you that can't possibly sustain you. You're waiting on something to fill you that can't possibly fill you. You got a, you got a, you got a water pot. He said instead of that water pot, you should have a well. So that you never run out. 
that you is that whenever you start getting low, thank you, God, all you got to do is draw from the well that you already got. You don't, thank, you, and thank you, God, if you, and if you got a well, you don't have to worry about somebody getting water for you. You don't have to worry about getting in the bed with somebody else and trying to develop a relationship and then have to go out with a water pot and get some water for you and Turn to your name and say, I'm taking care of myself. There comes a point in time, there comes a point in time where you gotta handle your business. There comes a point in time where you can't you don't have to look spe specifically for a handout. I just need access in. Thank you, God. I know what to do once I get there. But the door been closed. I need access. If you give me access, I can handle my business once I get there. Because there's some people that are already equipped, but they haven't got their opportunity yet. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Listen to verse 5. When it in. So she went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Thank you, God. Poured out is an important part of the text. Thank you, God. We need to end, though. Pour it out is important because here's what you got to do while you're in the house is whatever's, whatever's been locked up on the inside of you that you have not talked about, you need to get that out. What it, what, whatever that is on the inside, when he says that she poured out, it didn't, it didn't just say that she poured out the oil, but rather it said she poured out. She, re she released her faith into this thing. She, thank you, God. She poured out into this thing. She devoted into this thing. She committed to this thing. There comes a point in time where you have to pour out. There's some point. You've been, you've been harboring too much stuff on the inside. How can God give you something new if you're still holding on to the old? You got to pour out some of this old stuff. You got to release some old. You got to release some old regrets. You got to release some old, old, old traditions. You got to release some old animosity. You got to release some old hurts and some old pains. You got to pour all that that stuff out so that so a healer can come in she poured out she poured out in front of her sons there comes a point in time too there's there's times when we used to tell our children this grown folk talk because this grown folk talk you go mind your business this ain't about you but there comes a point in time that you need to involve your children in it as well whatever's going on you gotta let little Ricky know and you gotta let little Sarah know look this is what's going on as far as the house right now this is the situation that we're in and we all need to work together to make the house better there's no sense in us all being in the house and stuck in the house and fussing and complaining to one another we should out while we're in the house together while we're stuck together we shouldn't be picking we shouldn't have war zones in the house but rather we should have peace in the house we should be working together to see how everything's going to be pulled off somebody get the ladder somebody get the paintbrush somebody somebody wipe the trim down somebody pick the right paint somebody go online and see what's on for sale right now and, and work things out we got to work together to make the house better and to make the house put the house in an order Verse 6 says, it came to pass, the vessels were full. That she said unto her sons, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. We don't have any more. And the oil stayed. They borrowed as much as they could borrow. They brought it back home and they shut the door. They minded their own business and they worked on the word of God that was given to them. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We, thank you, God. I had, a, I had a Lord saying there's times that you don't need a handout. You need a word. Because everything you need will be in the word that you get. They started, they took the word literally, and they started working the word. Thank you, God. They didn't just, there comes a point in time where you rehearse it in your mind, but then there also comes a point in time where, where, you, where, you, where your words get feet behind them, where you get motivated and you begin to do something, and they started working the word that they got, going door to door and borrowing vessels, bringing it back home, and 
God that we get to all these vessels, something's going to happen. They started encouraging one another. She's encouraging her boys. Thank you for bringing the vessels home. Now go, go, to, go to the neighbor across the street over there and borrow some vessels over there. And the other son comes in and brings a few vessels in. Thank you, my son. Kiss him on the forehead. And go borrow some more vessels from the, around the corner. A neighbor, you know, around the, around the other side, across the fence, over the river. Go over there and borrow some vessels. Stay in the neighborhood. Don't leave the neighborhood. Don't leave the place of familiarity from you. But stay where you are in the neighborhood and borrow some vessels. Vessels, and they worked it. And they worked it. The word will work if you work it. And they worked it. She came and told the man of God, and he said, "Now here's the, here's the, here's the closing part. What he told her to do: go, sell the oil, pay off your debt, and live." thou and thy children off the rest. Okay, make some money. Pay your bills. And then live off the rest, but put some aside so that you can live off the rest. There should be enough saved to live off the rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That means that, means that you're going to have to be penny pinching. Thank you, God. That means that you're going to have to evaluate whether you're going to have to spend 250 on a pair of Jordans. Thank you. Yes, it does. That's just, I, look, and we talk about the men, but at the same time, we talk about the women too. Then you have to reevaluate whether you're supposed to have that Louis bag or not. You're going to have to reevaluate because it's, it's, it's about stewardship. Stewardship is uh, that you're going to pay your bills. You're going to make some money, you're going to pay your bills, and you're going to put some aside to live off the rest, you and your household, but also your children. It's not just about you, but it's also making sure that your children are straight. So there's some, there comes a point in time that you've got you to, you you thank you, the Bible says to count the cost of a thing. That a man should not begin to build except he first counted the cost. That he evaluated whether he had enough to pull it off and he could erect it and to build it. There comes a point in time where you got to look at your money. You got to look at your situation. You got to look at everything around you and is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it increasing or is it depleting? And thank you, God. And you can't always put a band aid on a gunshot wound. You gotta, you gotta address some issues head on. You're not serious about getting out of debt unless you know what, unless you know what you owe down to the penny. You're not serious then. If you, if you, if you don't know what you owe, you can't possibly pay it off. Now that you got the time, you ought to know everything when it comes to your money, when it comes to what's coming in, when it comes to come going out, when it comes to uh, the situation that your house is in, when it comes to your insurance, when it comes to your, when it comes to what you're saying aside for your future. Thank you, Lord. But not just that. Let's not just make it just about money. Let's also keep in mind now, let's also keep in mind now that we gotta, sometimes we've got to address health issues that we hadn't addressed before. Sometimes we've got we to gotta be serious and we've got we to gotta fix what needs to be. I hear the Lord saying maintenance. Maintenance refers to maintaining what you presently have and keeping it in good healthy and working order. Thank you, God. I hear the Lord saying maintenance. Thank you, Lord. When it comes to maintenance, it's coming to check in it while, you, while you're in the house. Check all the batteries and your smoke detectors. While, you, while you're in the house, check all your fixtures underneath your sink to make sure you're not leaking water. While you, while you got this time, thank you, God. Edge, edge outside your house and mulch outside your house. Why you got the time? Why you got the time? Go ahead and make that garden while you got the time. Thank you, Lord. Maximize the time that you have. He told her, the instruction was, the instruction was not to stay in the same situation that you were presently in before. That, thank you, God, because there's a correlation. I hear the Lord. There's a correlation when it, comes to, when it comes to debt with slavery. Thank you, Lord. Because the, thank you, God. You become a slave to the lender. 
that the borrower becomes a slave to the lender. You got to be you got to be careful. And, and financial financial debt is is can, can be a burden on people that you can lay down with and get up with it. And sometimes you're going after money, and you can't thank you God. We said a whole lot tonight, but you're going after you're going after money. But at the same time, you got to stay focused on God because you can't you can't have two masters. You're gonna love one and you're gonna hate the other. Making money should not be the sum total of your existence. You shouldn't always be going after that extra dollar. There's nothing wrong with being straight. That's not what we're saying. Don't twist it what I'm saying. You, there's nothing wrong with being straight and getting straight. There's nothing wrong with buying a home and having a summer home. There's nothing wrong with having a, a one car and another car. There's nothing wrong with that. But the issue is when it becomes, becomes an idol, it becomes idolatry to you, that you're worshiping the dollar rather than worshiping God. You know what the Apostle Paul said? I'm about to close here. I done kept you long. The Apostle Paul said, I know how to be content. I know how to figure out my, my sweet spot where I'm good. Thank you, Lord. That I have, I have, I have what I need. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's, that you don't chase after your goals. That you don't, have, you don't be ambitious. That you, don't, that you don't chase down your dreams. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying is don't continue, thank you, God, to do the same thing that you did last year and expect something different to happen. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. He told her after she got enough oil in the house, she, he didn't tell her to go out and get in debt again. He told her to pay off the debt. Have some money to the side. And live off the rest. That means be fiscally responsible. Thank you, God. It means get your house in order. Husband and wives need to have their talk and get the house in order. Make sure your money situation is straight. Make sure your future situation is straight. When it comes to, when it comes to the hospital situation, it comes to death, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. When it comes to who, where you, we're going to be buried at, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. That debt shouldn't be falling on your children. That should already be in order. Thank you, Lord. Come to your mortgage situation. Evaluate where your mortgage is at. Is, is now the right time to, to refinance to get a lower interest rate or, or whatever it is? got to evaluate everything now. got to count the cost now. you got to get the house in order now. While you have this time, time is valuable. Talk to God. Get a word. And then work the word that you got. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the anointing that's on your word. We thank you for the power that's on your word. We thank you for the relevance and timing of your word. We thank you for moving by your spirit. And we thank you, Father, that we are preparing for Pentecost. That while we're preparing... We're getting our houses in order. We're fixing things, whatever needs to be fixed, whatever needs to be tweaked. If windows need to be replaced, Father, we need to get our house in order, but also our spiritual house. Do we have to have prayer in the house again? Do we have to have Bible study? Do we have to have a time where the family gets together we, where, that fits us all, that we're not suffocating each other, but there's a time that works best for us all to make sure our houses are in order? Are we looking at everything that needs to be addressed? Are we no longer tiptoeing around stuff, but we're fixing what needs to be fixed. I thank you tonight. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your word tonight that will keep us motivated. I thank you for your word tonight that will keep us inspired and energized. I thank you for your word tonight and the recipients of your word tonight. Thank you for Tiffany Monroe and her family tonight, her, her, her brothers and her, her, her parents tonight. Thank you for watching over Edna Carter tonight. Uh, thank you for watching over uh, Susie and James, the Carter family, dear Lord, and also James and Trudy tonight. Thank you for watching over 
uh, the Addison family. We're referring to Tori and, and Eunice and, and Tyrese. Thank you for watching over Jeannie and, and, and Deborah tonight, Father. We thank you for watching over Amanda and Raleigh and Victoria and Charlie and John tonight. We thank you, Father, that we call names out tonight. We thank you for watching over Latoria, Latoria tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you for watching over her and her child tonight, dear Lord. Thank you for watching over Petery and her, her husband tonight, dear Lord, her parents tonight, and Leticia tonight, and her sons tonight. Uh, Sierra and her husband tonight and her, her sons as well tonight. We thank you for watching over DV tonight, wherever she may be at this moment, and her children tonight. We thank you for watching over uh, Ezel and Karina tonight, my sisters and my brothers tonight, and Nanny and her husband and, and her sons tonight. Thank you for watching over Cammie tonight and, and Brittany tonight. Thank you for watching over her, Brittany and, and Cammie's, uh, their, their mother and grandmother tonight, dear Lord. Thank you for watching over your word to see it performed tonight. Thank you for watching over Kamala tonight. Thank you for watching over, watching over Kayla tonight. Thank you for watching over uh, Mandy and, uh, and, and Adam West tonight, dear Lord, and, and their daughters tonight, dear Lord. Thank you, Father, that nothing is too hard for you and that you're fixing things that were broken, that you're fixing things that were even that we even perceive were good. You're going to make them better. We thank you for watching over Janet Thompson and Bill tonight, dear Lord. We thank you for watching over your word to see it perform in their lives tonight and their loved ones tonight, dear Lord. We thank you for watching over my mother tonight in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. And we thank you for watching over Mike and Renee tonight in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. Renee's sister tonight in D.C. tonight. We thank you for watching over her tonight, dear Lord, and, and, and keeping her inspired and keeping her on fire for the Lord. We thank you for watching over Christine and Sandra tonight. We thank you for our Eden family tonight, dear Lord. Anita and Trina tonight, Regina tonight, and Shanice tonight. We thank you tonight for watching over the Davis family tonight, Tanta and her sons and her daughter tonight, Father. We thank you for watching over their family tonight. We thank you for watching over Danny and Kyra tonight, dear Lord, and, and Carolyn Nicholson tonight, dear Lord, and, and Diane Tannis tonight, dear Lord. We thank you for our loved ones, our family members, my brother in Mississippi tonight, dear Lord. We thank you for watching over him, dear Lord. We thank you for the sacredness of your word. We thank you for watching over Drea and her children tonight. We thank you for Andrea and, and, and John Spinner tonight, dear Lord. And we thank you for watching over Irene tonight, dear Lord, and Angela and Rayshawn and Jason tonight. We thank you for our Eden family tonight. Cecil Thacker tonight. Debbie Collins tonight. The Davenports tonight. Lucretia and also Charlie tonight, dear Lord. And, and we thank you for watching over Joseph Sherr tonight, dear Lord. And uh, the Jackson family as well. We think about Ronnie and Elizabeth, but also uh, the father as well. We thank you for watching over families. That nothing is too hard for you. Lord, we give you all the honor tonight. We give you all the praise tonight. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. I was, as I was in prayer, also my, my sister Melissa Milway tonight. Keep her strong tonight and her daughters tonight. Camille tonight, keep her wise tonight, keep her safe, and also her father tonight, that there is no distance in prayer tonight. Lord, we give you all the honor, the rights tonight. My brother James Wright tonight, Tina Brown tonight, dear Lord, Catherine Wright tonight, Wendy Carter tonight, Tamara, ton Tamara Wright tonight. Father, we thank you right now for watching over Russell Carter tonight, dear Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Vonda tonight, her sisters tonight, her husband tonight. We thank you tonight. Kia Anderson tonight, her daughter tonight. We thank you tonight for who's assembled in this room. We thank you for our extended family online. And we thank you for watching over your word to see it perform tonight. Mary Elaine tonight. Father, touch her tonight. Lord, we give you all the honor tonight. We give you all the praise tonight. We thank you that the devil is on the run tonight. 
because houses are in order, dear Lord. And we thank you that the blood is over the door. Thank you, God. I hear the Lord saying, as we close tonight, as we close away from here in prayer, I hear the Lord saying, anoint your houses. Thank you, God, that while you have this time and you're getting things in order naturally, you need to make sure that it's insured spiritually by anointing your house. Lord, we give you all the honor tonight. We give you all the praise tonight. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, the Lord, for tonight. The blessing for tonight is the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Eden and Israel in the United States. And I will bless them. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Be blessed tonight. Be safe tonight. And tune in to us again on Sunday morning at 11. Be blessed.